Reichner, and this is a reading from Beguiled by Night, a vampire tale. It's a story of an ancient French vampire who lives in present day Los Angeles. He's well adjusted to his modern life, but without warning, his time begins to unravel. In this scene, he finds himself in the year 1959, and he's recalling a story from his future past. Los Angeles, California, 2000. It was the first and last time he went to a goth club. He wanted to break up the monotony and perhaps to prove to himself that he was right about the frauds. The club was called Vortex 13 and floated around to various locations in Los Angeles. When he first arrived, he recoiled in the entryway, hesitant to go any further. The music was angry, deafening, but it had an unexpected effect on his ears. It spoke to him. He took a deep breath and walked through the door with a cigarette dangling from his mouth. It cost $20 to get in and he had to show his ID. It amused him. 332 years old and still getting carded. Nice, he thought. The room was filled with goths, unclassified societal rejects, punks, and a smattering of squares attempting to broaden their colorless horizons and take a walk on the wild side. They stuck out the most. He studied faces as he began to move through the crowd. So much black eyeliner, so many facial piercings, so many red and white contacts. He went up to the bar and ordered his customary wine next to a gigantic biking of a goth guy who jerked his head at him. Bokeland's height is two meters, but this man stood head and shoulders above him. Good evening, Vokalan said, keeping his lips as close together as possible as he would always want to do. What's up, said the Viking, flashing his store-bought fangs. Vokalan was speechless. Well done, he blurted finally, raising his glass. He thrust his chin out. He considered bearing his own quite real teeth, but thought better of it and said, enjoy yourself, one of me, and vanished into the crowd. On a stage at the end of the room, a live dominatrix show was in progress. He never understood how these worlds had merged. Bondage, goths, vikings, vampires, steel spikes, neo-nazis, quiffs, piercings, greasers, death metal, pseudo-satanists. It was a melange of concepts that did not quite fit together, but had nowhere else to go. They had all blended into a parody of themselves. Or maybe he was just too different, too discriminating, and this lifestyle simply did not appeal to him. Regardless, Vortex 13 was not meant for a real vampire. It was imaginary, make-believe. As hard as these people fronted their vampirism, he struggled twice as hard to remain hidden from sight. He continued on, walking and observing, and as he moved through the bar, he received dozens of dirty looks. It occurred to him that these people were lumping him in with the squares and thought he did not belong there. It was hilarious. An authentic revenant in a club designed for the children of the night was being summarily rejected. He laughed out loud, tilting his head back. Bewildered by the spectacle, he did not notice the small goth girl sidling up to him. She was staring at his teeth, which were exposed by his laughter. Those are really good things, 
she said. What? Vogelin yelled, leaning down. His acute vampire hearing was no match for the stultifying industrial music. She stood on tiptoe and screamed into his ear. I said, those are really good fangs. Where did you buy them? She smiled and pointed to her adhesive things. As he reached toward them, someone bumped into him, causing him to knock one off. It tumbled to the floor. I beg your pardon, he yelled. They looked down in unison. It would be absurd to attempt its retrieval from the mucky floor. He could feel the soles of his shoes sticking with each step. He forced himself to not think about what filth he was walking upon. A hellish recipe of vomit, spilled liquor, sweat, and God knows what else. He glanced up at him and placed a hand on his chest. He was moved by her gentleness and parted his lips. She prodded his elongated canines one by one, having no idea that she was handling the weaponry of a true vampire, pricking her finger upon a point. A bead of blood appeared on her fingertip and Bokolan's nostrils splayed. Her eyes widened and she plunged her ruptured finger into her mouth. She was elfin, skin the color of moonlight, with jet black hair framing her face. It rose on her crown into a slight bouffant, and sharp bangs came to a point in the center of her forehead. He gazed down her body. She wore a black dress, ripped fishnets, and heavy, unfeminine boots. Intermingled in the scent of her blood was the distinct fragrance of lilies, a heavy aroma of death, an odor undetectable by humans. He was enraptured. Come home with me, he willed silently. Her lips smelled, yeah, but it was inaudible to anyone besides Vogelin. She began to move towards the door. He grasped her elbow and steered her through the crowd. In the parking lot, she popped her remaining faux fang off, flicking it across the pavement. He opened the car door for her and she froze, glancing sideways at him. She was young, but whatever her age, she was not of a generation where men opened car doors for women. The drive to his house took almost an hour in the congested Saturday night LA traffic. The entire time she stared straight ahead, saying nothing. His enchantment was potent. There was classical music on the car stereo. If she had had her senses about her, she would think that the sky was really, really weird. Who would choose to listen to music like this? on purpose. When they pulled up in his driveway, he decided he wanted to have a bit of fun with this one. It was turning out to be his favorite type of evening, a fuck followed by a kill. This was a rare treat. There was a lot more killing than fucking in this life. It was a, an indulgence and he aimed to enjoy it to the fullest. Now, the true performance could commence. He snapped his fingers and broke the spell. Here we are, he said. Wow, well, what is this place? She asked, wide-eyed. Vokalan laughed. This is my home. He took her hand and lifted it into the air, leading her into the house like a lady of the court. This impressed her. She had never been treated this way before. She looked down at his hand, startled by the chill of his flesh. He opened the front door and guided her inside with his hand on the small of her back. Oh my God, so beautiful. She breathed. 
marveling at the interior of the house. Thank you. I inherited it from a loved one. He had long gotten over sullying Maeve's memory by bringing victims into the house. It was safer for him than killing on the streets. He led her to the sofa. What's your name, Mon Ange? Michelle, she said. What's yours? Louis Augustin de Vaucelin, he said. Um, pretty fancy name, she said. Is it? Well, you can thank my French ancestry. Would you like a glass of wine? Okay, she said. He went to the kitchen and brought back two glasses and a bottle. He was enjoying himself immensely. He put Miles Davis on the stereo. It was a benediction for his ears after the debauchery of the club music. So tell me, Mademoiselle Michelle, why this fascination with darkness and vampires? Though she had been slump-shouldered and morose, at the mention of vampire, she sat upright and her voice became effervescent. Dude, I fucking love vampires. I've read a lot of books and I've seen all the movies. Vampires are super bad. And which do you most admire? Gary Oldman as Dracula and Lestat, obviously. I guess those two movies are what made me love vampires so much. I didn't like the original Dracula, the old one. I thought it was totally boring, whatever. He didn't even have any fangs. Vokalan suppressed a smile. Very good. Respectable vampires, the both of them. What about you? You don't look like the rest of the guys that go to Vortex. Were you slumming? He was unfamiliar with the term slumming, but he got the gist. Oh, my sweet. I am most definitely not like those guys. So where did you get those great things? Are you with the studios? They're good enough to be in a movie. As a matter of fact, I am. I'm a writer. Holy shit, that's so cool. Are you writing a vampire script for a movie? Well, I'm dabbling a bit with one in particular, he said. It's a work in progress, although it may take me an eternity to finish it. One might say I'm still doing my research. So that's why I was at the club tonight. Was it that obvious I'm an outsider? Yeah, totally. You're dressed too nice. Bokalan was quite taken with this woman. She was a delight. He had chosen well. He would almost hate taking her life. Please satisfy my curiosity. It isn't every day I get to speak to such a passionate vampire fan. What else is it about them that intrigues you so? He asked. I love that they get to live forever. It's like so dark and romantic. I'm jealous of them. It's way more exciting than the boring way people live now. True, very true. But the vampire leads such a lonely existence, does he not? And what about the killing? Delivering humans to their deaths. Making their life worse. Surely you find that unappealing. Do you drink blood? She squirmed in the chair. That question always makes mortals uncomfortable. No, I've only tasted my own. I've never really thought about that. They're just movies. I go to the club because I feel accepted there. I don't really fit in anywhere else. You don't drink it, do you? I've had my fair share. It's an acquired taste for sure. He softened towards her. 
He knew all too well how it felt to be an outcast, to scrounge the dark fringes of society for a fleeting fragment of detachment. Can I use your bathroom? She asked. Of course, mademoiselle. Vokalan led her to the door and returned to the living room. This was the problem with acting. He should regard her as mere sustenance. But then she had to go and be adorable. Thank <laughs> you.